Good evening. Recap night. Woo-hoo. Favorite moments night. Um, best takeaways. Um, this is not a sports highlight reel. Um, this is going to be an axe highlight reel. <laughs> but there are bloopers. Oh, there sure are. Um, <laughs> this is uh, an incredible book. Acts of the Apostles is what it's called. Uh, it is really the Acts of the Holy Spirit, but yeah. formally it's known as the Acts of the mm-hmm. Apostles. It is um, give us our earliest record of what <coughs> we are to actually look like in our world today. Yeah. It gives us the earliest record of what is possible through the Christian church. It has set the bar very high, and I'm glad. Mm. And it causes us all to reach a little bit higher, yeah. maybe a little bit deeper, take our lives seriously, our time in a purpose, purposeful way. It causes us to look at uh, our contribution in an eternal sense. All of this comes out of a good uh, going through of, of the book of Acts. These are our forefathers in the faith. Mm. How they lived is our model. They are our mentors. And so... Uh, this is a, a huge book for us, and it's, it's always had a big play into my own life. Mm-hmm. Um, guys, I think this book probably touched you in some way, maybe favorite uh, stories, themes, uh, takeaways. Sure. So, hey, who's first up? I'll start. There you go. Yeah. Um, I love a good makeover story. And so right at the beginning of this book, and actually even the end of the Gospels, um, as you're reading through the Gospels, and Peter's a disciple of Jesus, he's always kind of this, like, fumbly type of guy. And then, of course, we know when he denies Jesus, and, and we find him, like, going back to what he once knew, what he was comfortable at, fishing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then while Jesus is still on the earth before he ascends, um, he calls Peter to more, right? He restores him. And so at the beginning of Acts, uh, it's right at Jesus' ascension. And I don't know about you guys, but I know for me, when I'm in a growth process, when someone's teaching me and I'm learning under them, you have that like safety and security. It's really, growth is really painful and you're learning a lot and there's the safety and security and having your teacher there. But eventually in order for you to truly take that next leap, they have to release you. And I, I don't like that stage because I feel a lot of insecurity in it and and whatnot. Um, But when Jesus ascends and leaves the Holy Spirit, we see Peter become this totally different guy. He just steps up and walks into this new role. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, he is addressing crowds. He is totally walking into this calling with so much confidence, not in himself, I'm sure, and in God and what God can do through him and with the help of the Holy Spirit. But I just love that transformation from this kind of fumbly and insecure and even and hits his lowest point to like boom he mm. is making a huge impact in the early church and I just I totally love that that letting go and then he just comes alive so for me that was a huge highlight you know it doesn't surprise me you brought that one up really yeah well every woman likes a good makeover <laughs> I, that's what I, I'm like, totally totally I do but- we have the picture of the ascension here we mm-hmm. have behind us. And a lot of people would think that's the end, but it was a beginning. That's and that's right. a story yeah. there that paints yeah. that. Yeah. Totally. It was really the beginning of Peter and mm-hmm. his journey for what the big story was for his life. Eh? Absolutely. Right away, yeah. he's addressing the crowd and with this bold statement, you know, and yeah. and he's tasked with some really amazing things that are and, really hard to do. And that story is a bit of a mentoring for you. Like, yes, you know, where you've got to not just be taught, but you step into it. You have to. Right. Uh, there's a certain point when you are just kind of out there um, feeling like you might be on your own. Of course, if you're walking in your calling, it's with God. Um, but yes, it's it's definitely, I can relate to parts so of that. If I was to throw it in here, it, it, we say the acts of the apostles, but in essence, it's like the acts of Angela have to begin. Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. And exactly. the book of Acts is like that. Yes. It's like you can't be a, a sideliner. No. 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 Right? Absolutely. You have to step into your calling and just, and it takes a lot of trust. And yeah, it's, I, oh. I love that. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Who's next? Sure. Oh, uh, sure. You sure. Could, you beat I don't me too. Armor sure wrestle. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, for myself, I really, um, I really like just like watching and seeing how, you know, how his stories and his life kind of play out. And I'm a bit of a storyteller myself. And so <laughs> hearing it, uh, like Axe is really cool because it is kind of, it's one of those story type um, chapters in the Bible, but you get to see how a guy lived out his life. Like, like when he's with the tent builders or in all these different, you know, Athens where he uses the culture and stuff, you just get to see how he kind of just uses what he knows, the tools he has to, to uh, t tell the word of God. And um, yeah, I think that um, we have two resumes, I think, in life. And one is, uh, is, is our life resume um, that we fill out, you know, like the work we do, the people we meet and stuff. Then we have our God resume as well. And um, I, I struggled a lot in my life with, um, I felt like I was filling out the one resume, but not uh, necessarily filling out my God resume or what I was doing to spread the word of God. And um, one passage that always really hits me in Acts is um, 20, 24. It says, but my life is worth nothing unless I use it for doing the work that was assigned to me by the Lord Jesus. And yeah, I get a little emotional just even yeah. thinking about this just because, um, yeah, it was a real struggle in my life. Like I didn't know how to use um, what I did every day in my life to, uh, to show God. And I felt like there was lots of opportunities that I had that I, I wasn't able to have the courage or anything to um, do what I could have done. I mean, I was, I was a good storyteller, but I just kept it away from telling the gospel mm -hmm. or telling about Jesus. And then kind of, I found myself in this role here now at the church and stuff. And it's like, I kind of get to re go back and make up for lost time. I guess I get to start telling that story that I know I needed to do. And um, yeah, so just watching Paul and the, the way that he kind of was in the same way, he hated the Christians in a sense. I didn't hate the Christians. I was a Christian, but he kind of was on this one one side of the fence and all of a sudden it was like I'm going all in on the other side right mm -hmm. so I really relate to that um, through him yeah Cool. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's awesome. I, I, I think I think it speaks to you know the journey of God. You know, you might not, you might think you missed it. Mm -hmm. You know, for some years you yeah. didn't. You were just being set up. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Same, same with yeah. Saul to Paul, and then the journey that he went on. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it's so funny, like looking back at my own life too. Again, um, just all the things that you did in your life, and how those like things, those skills, and those uh, situations, and those stories that you acquired how much they, you can use them later on. Even, even the mistakes, right, right. are yeah. something that is so easily I can use to share the story of um, Jesus and the story of God and, and the skills you acquire and everything. Like, like even playing guitar, I, I started playing like music with Brent as a kid and I was like, I don't really know why I like playing guitar so much. Don't know what I'm going to do with it later, kind of. And here I am like on the stage with them playing music and stuff. Like it's, it's funny how God will take every little thing in your life and he has has a, 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 a grand purpose for it, right? Mm -hmm. it really does. Yeah. I, and I do like the idea of like late bloomers, like mm -hmm. Saul, for instance, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was quite, quite along in his life before right? he but got to the What I, what I love picture. about that, what's so stunning about that is like Paul never, his past, his sinful past persecuting Christians, he used that as a jumping off point yeah. to really dive into his ministry. He never used it as a, what right do I have? to preach the gospel because I used to kill, you know, be a part of the persecution mm. of Christians or a leader. It was always this, this, you know, I was the chief sinner, but here's what God could do. And doesn't that, doesn't that point to the absolute freedom mm. of, of the gospel, right? Like, totally. Like absolutely free to move forward from that past, to yeah. use the past. Mm. Yeah. But, but and just to finish off your little section on that. We're blessed to have you. Yeah. Oh, thank you very and, much. And yeah. you are uh, somebody, like you said, you maybe never saw yourself really doing this or no, whatever, no. but God's resume is in. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and the church is blessed to have you functioning mm -hmm. in, in this and what you're doing. Well, thank you very much. Even if it's mainly country music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. We'll take it. There's other good you, you, things. You're supposed to say, you mean God's music. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it is awesome to have you, buddy. Uh, for me, my favorite story is uh, the shipwreck one, the, 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 the storm, two weeks of, it, it is adventure. It's maybe not fun adventure, but it's, it's adventure. It's one you look back on. And then uh, uh, shipwrecking on the island and all that. But uh, 
story-wise, that's my favorite. But but something that uh, has always jumped out to me in in the Book of Acts is kind of jumping off of what Angela said about Peter. He turned into this guy who saw. He was able to see opportunities when they mm-hmm. came. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of, I, I don't know, it's funny, like like you, Ethan, and I wonder mm-hmm. how many times in my life have I missed opportunities? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have I just not seen them or I wasn't looking for them? Right. Uh, so, so I want to go off chapter three where Peter and John are walking to the temple and there's that uh, lame beggar who had been mm-hmm. uh, born that way, had been born crippled from birth. And... Uh, he, the people would place him there beside the beautiful gate and he would just mm-hmm. beg for money every day. That was his life. And uh, I can't remember how old the guy was, but he was well on in his years. So this was just his lot in life in yeah. his mind, right? Yeah. But along come Peter and John. Uh, and Peter m- must have been prompted. God must have prompted him. You're going to heal this guy. Uh, but he used it. He saw the opportunity. He said, I don't have any money to give you, but in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, get up and walk. All of a sudden, this guy, who that literally was all he knew, that was his lot in life, is fully functional. Mm -hmm. Jumping, running, Mm -hmm. spinning, whatever. Uh, And then, on top of that, Peter then sees another opportunity Mm -hmm. to, oh, okay, there's a crowd coming, now I'm going to preach the gospel. Mm. And so for me, it, it's just like if you are walking in that, uh, it's not just a Sunday morning thing, mm-hmm. uh, the gospel. It's if you are walking in that and you're allowing that to be a part of your life, you're allowing uh, God's word and the Holy Spirit to guide you, you are going to see these opportunities and really great things are going to follow you mm-hmm. wherever you go mm-hmm. because you're going to be, you're going to have eyes to see, I guess. Yeah. Um, but that, I, I love that about Peter. All of a sudden, he just saw these and seized these opportunities. Totally. Yeah. So, what we got is, let me recap, the Acts of Angela. The idea that, hey, Jesus' ascension wasn't the end, it was the beginning. Yeah. And guys like Peter, they never, never thought they'd be there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And look at how God used them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. First preach and thousands come to Christ. And the story begins for him. Mm-hmm. And the confidence he walks into in the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. A time when you own that God has anointed you. Next step, we'll talk about Ethan. Ethan, where he comes to a place where my resume, that's what I was filling out. Mm-hmm. Until there came to a point where God's resume took over. Yeah. And I knew it. Mm-hmm. And I ascribed to it. Mm. And I'm living that out. And moving forward with that. Mm. And that he takes everything from history, puts it into my current, uses it. Mm-hmm. And how blessed you are to be a part of that journey in God. Yeah, the amazing exactly. resume he's got. And we mm. end up with Brent. I have no idea where he was. No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we have Brent speaking about opportunity. That even in the midst of the worst dire circumstances like storms. Hmm. Here is an opportunity that Paul wasn't going to miss because he always saw things with the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was willing to look at what God saw in the storm, what God saw in the challenge of the day, Mm -hmm. what God saw in the viper, what did God see? And uh, that provides opportunity. The book of Acts is phenomenal because God was able to use men and women Because men and women let God use them, Mm. gave their lives to God more fully, more deeply. And if there's a prayer I think all of us have for the listeners throughout this whole time, is that would happen for each of you more fully, more deeply. May God do his work in and through you. And may you experience the vibrancy, the adventure, and the authenticity of what the book of Acts reveals about your Christian faith. God bless you. Glad you've been on board. Mm. Watch for the new book next week. I'm not telling you. You have to tune in. Tuesday, we'll be introducing a new book. And uh, starting Tuesday, Thursday, same time, 8 o'clock in the evening, will be available. And uh, twice a week throughout the summer. It's been fun being with you. Thanks for the privilege. God bless. Love you guys. Morning, I see you. Sunrise every morning. It's like a picture that you've painted for me. A love letter in the sky. 
ACTS, action. My favorite movies have always been action-oriented movies. There is no movie that can encapsulate all that is in this book. It's amazing. Action is movement. You move a band like Paul from so far on this side of the pole to this side. A man that persecuted involved in signing off on killings and imprisonment to a man who is willing to lay down every part of his life for the gospel of Jesus Christ, who counted his life nothing that he might achieve the winning of the race that he was given. Amazing movement, action, a life filled with it. There's not one character in the book of Acts that doesn't have this going on. In our heart of hearts, we crave it. We crave the adventures of life. We crave the ability to be able to be alive on the inside truly. Waiting, not not waiting for, for, for the best that God's got, but running after the best. We're not waiting for life to happen. We're not 
waiting for things to come to us. We've got a call. We're moving forward. We're going at it. We're climbing the mountains. We're going through the rivers, walking through the valleys, doing whatever's needed. That all makes life worth living. The way of the cross, the way of Jesus, the way, as it was called originally all throughout the book of Acts, is filled with a full life. Yes, dangers, yes, risk, yes, uncomfort, discomfort. And yet the closest of intimacies, the greatest sense of fulfillment and satisfaction, your adventuresome heart challenged and taken to the max. This is the best way to live. Poured out, Paul said, my life is. It's just poured out like an offering unto the Lord. Acts isn't just there to record their events. Because their events are directly tied to ours. And it reaches down through the centuries. What they did, how they lived, is still part of how we do today as the family of faith. As a person of faith in Christ. His call still remains the same. It echoes in the human heart. Their journey's complete. Ours is still underway. Whatever days you have left, the best thing you can do for yourself is begin your own acts. So, Father, may your call ring in our hearts today. May we not be ones that, Lord, don't enter into the full adventure of the days given, the opportunities the joys that can be had, the challenges and the risks, all because, Lord, you're worth it. Our lives are poured out like an offering to you. Thank you, Lord. Give us strength and courage in our families, in all of our areas, to represent you well, share you from our hearts, care about those around us. Use us, we pray, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.